good day. Uh, this is Sunil Subramaniam, uh, Managing Director of Sundaram Mutual Fund with my budget blast. Shortly after Nimla Madam presented the budget, uh, my quick takeaways from it uh, for the benefit of all. First of all, I think it's a very positive budget for the economy and consequently for the capital markets. How do I rate this budget? I would give it a rating of eight and a half out of 10. You may wonder why I'm giving such a high rating because if you look at the situation on a post COVID world that the government has already running a very high fiscal deficit. There was a pressure from a lot of quarters to do popular measures. There was a, a demand for supporting consumption because two successive pandemic years means consumption has been falling. The madam has chosen not to yield to those pressures and she has kept her focus on what she started last year, that is capital expenditure. And capital expenditure versus revenue expenditure, in my mind, the winner is clearly CapEx because CapEx carries a multi-year growth multiplier to the economy. Revenue gets fizzled out in the space of a year. So while short-term growth demands might have tempted her to go for the populism, she has stayed away. And especially notable is because this is an election year with UP and Punjab elections slated, the temptation of the government to give some soft related to those states, as well as given the rollback on the farm laws, whether they would like to appease farmers with some kind of a loan waiver and all of these factors were there in the run-up. But glad to say that by staying away from all of that, she has kept her focus clearly on the path of supporting growth. And I think the last year's emphasis of the government on capital expenditure and supporting growth has been paid off by the sharp jump in the revenue receipts for the government. Hence, revenue receipts and revenue expenditure have been kept under control, and she's able to demonstrate a fiscal deficit of only 6.9 versus 6.8, despite the fact that the capital revenue expenditure, capital surpluses, that is the receipts, capital receipts, are expected flat at the budget estimates. That's because the good news that she shared was that we are ready to go with the LIC IPO in this fiscal year itself. So that's a very positive news for the market because obviously LIC is the big bang IPO and lots of retail investors are very happy to understand that it's going to happen this year. Not only about this year, the good news from the budget was also about the proposals for next year where revenue expenditure has been kept under control but a massive 35% jump in the capital expenditure by the center and overall center plus state, almost a 20 odd percent jump because the states are also expected to increase their capex. And the government, central government is going to support the states with a 50 year interest free loan of what was only 15,000 crores in this year to 100,000 crores next year. So the government is clearly keen to push the states also to do capex, and which is what should lead to an all-round development. The states have been permitted a fiscal deficit of 4%, additional half percent only for power reforms, which again is good news because as you know, state electricity boards aren't very good at paying their suppliers. So this additional boost, which is being continued to the states that you give you a leeway on the fiscal deficit if you do power reforms. So overall, I think a budget which is realistic and which is growth oriented from next year's perspective and the multiplier effect. And if you see where are those areas, the areas are in terms of the Awaz Yojana, right? The housing, right? 48,000 crores has been allocated for the Pradhan Mantri Awaz Yojana. Housing, as you all know, is a big multiplier, both in terms of generating employment and in terms of the uh, uh, 10 to 12 sectors that benefit from housing. So cement, steel, capital goods suppliers, all of these are going to benefit. The other thing is the good news which she revealed was the extent of the success of the PLI program spread across 14 sectors has got almost 30 lakh crores of promised investment. This is foreign private investment coming into India. So a big source of financing of our CapEx revolution is going to happen from FDI through the PLI scheme. And they have expanded the PLI scheme to include some more sectors this year. 
The other good news of the budget was the Atman Nirbar continuity. So again, the government's focus on reform is seen here, where now they have increased the allocation of defense expenditure from 58% to 68% to domestic suppliers. Again, the spin-off benefits of lots of small cap and mid-cap companies getting order books from the defense services sector is going to be a huge boost to the domestic economy. What else is a landmark thing? The landmark thing, I would say, is the announce of the digital Bitcoin effectively by the government of India. Through Reserve Bank, we will launch our own digital currency, and that will help the whole digitalization forward. And I think a number of digital related things have been given infrastructure status. So I think India is going to take the lead in terms, probably it's the only first major country to announce their own uh, digital currency. So we are taking the lead on the digital front. And I think with the emphasis on digital, a lot of the IT companies will now get domestic orders as India goes through this process of digital transformation. The other thing where, again, we continue our leadership is in the green area. In the green tech, the government has launched the announcement, the launch of green bonds, specifically to finance green-related capex, right? So as you can see, the government has stayed away from short-term impulses, kept their focus on long-term growth. And she has also mentioned in the whole uh, uh, speech that she's now targeting India at 100, 2047. So the emphasis on long-term versus short-term, the emphasis on capital expenditure versus revenue expenditure, the discipline to stay away from tax ops to give away money to people which will get spent this year versus generating employment through infrastructure, which will give people money for many years to come as new jobs get created. So classically, this is about giving the man the skills to go fishing rather than feeding him a fish. So I think the overall tone of the budget has been very positive. And of all the things, right, for next year, they've kept the capital receipts. This year, with uh, LIC happening, it should be broadly on target. Next year, they've kept it at the same. And how are they going to do that? Further disinvestment, but more importantly, they've announced the 5G auction for telecom, which as you can realize, by getting into the 5G space, we are going to give a huge thrust to our digital infrastructure and our speed of execution of a lot of things. So lots of other minor points in the budget which were uh, positive. I will not mention them one by one, but overall, I would like to summarize by saying that this is a budget which is taking risks on promoting capital expenditure as the ultimate tool. So it's Keynesian economics at its best. And I think from that perspective, being a growth oriented budget, future GDP growth leading to future EPS growth and hence higher valuation for the stock market means that I would call this a very stock market friendly budget from an economic and EPS growth perspective. And hence to summarize, my rating of this budget is an eight and a half out of 10. So I think it's a great case for all of you to invest more in domestic economy sensitive area on the stock market. And hence, I would again reiterate that a multi-cap, flexi-cap approach would be the best approach for investors in a post-budget scenario. All the best and happy investing. Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme-related documents carefully.